Today on the Tesla Snack, we're talking about better brakes, wheels, and tires for the track. So in our last video, we showed how to improve the range of the Model 3 performance with more efficient wheels and tires. If you want to see that, click the card in the corner or the link in the description. In this video, we're kind of doing the opposite. The upgrades we're talking about today will help you have more fun by extending your car's limits while also making it safer on the track. For example, 200 Treadwear summer tires will improve your lap times, but at the cost of efficiency and range. By the way, this video is not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. I bet everything with my own money and all of this is just my opinion. The first thing on our list for track safety is something you won't even see, brake fluid. While upgrading fluid doesn't sound very exciting, brake fluid is one of the most important things to change if you're going to track your car. Racing involves just as much braking as it does accelerating. All that braking generates heat, and that heat starts to transfer to your fluid. If your fluid gets too hot, it can boil, creating pockets of air in your brake lines. This can lead to your brakes feeling soft, or worse, becoming completely ineffective. Imagine flying down a straight at over 100 miles per hour, stomping on the brakes to slow down for the turn, and nothing happens. It's a Tesla, so you'll most likely survive, but your car will be gone. The key is to get brake fluid with a higher boiling point, or BP, so this doesn't happen, right? Duh. Except for one thing. Brake fluid has two PPs, wet and dry. Brake fluid is hygroscopic, meaning it wants to absorb water from its surroundings, and that includes air. Moisture in the air can seep into the fluid in your braking system over time, making it wet. Wet fluid will always have a lower BP than it's dry. Dry means it's brand new right out of the container. Some fluids have great dry specs, but inferior wet. Motul RBF660, for example, has a competitively high dry, but a relatively low wet BP. Unplugged Performance uses Motul RBF660 in their cars because they're replacing their fluid before every race. Castrol SRF, which is what I use, has a much higher wet BP than the Motul while still offering a very good dry, so you don't have to change it as often. When it comes to brake fluid's DOT ratings, all you really need to know is that DOT4, like Motul and Castrol, is what most people use for racing, DOT3 is the lower standard most vehicles have from the factory, you want to avoid DOT5 as it could literally destroy your braking system, and DOT5.1 is mostly irrelevant. If you want to take an even deeper dive into the world of brake fluid, there's a great article linked in the description. Next, we're going to look at brake lines. Changing your lines isn't nearly as vital as brake fluid, but it's a cheap upgrade that has some benefits. The lines your Tesla has from the factory are the standard rubber ones most vehicles come with. These are perfectly adequate for day-to-day -day driving. Even Ferraris and Lamborghinis have them. The main issue with rubber lines is, once again, heat. They're not going to melt or anything, but as the fluid in them gets hot, they're going to expand, making the pedal feel mushy. They won't fail, but spongy brakes aren't confidence-inspiring, and that's the last thing you want when pushing your car to the limit. Enter stainless steel lines. They're immune to expansion, keeping your brakes feeling solid, and they're also less likely to be damaged by debris on the track than rubber lines. A potential downside of stainless steel lines are that they're more rigid. If installed incorrectly, they could fail from the extra stress on the fittings. I bought my lines from Unplugged Performance, links in the description. The other item I got from them is the next thing on our list, brake pads. The OEM pads your Tesla comes with are optimized for everyday use. They're cheap, designed to be quiet, and produce minimal brake dust. Track pads, on the other hand, are expensive, loud, dust more, and wear out your brake rotors a lot faster. That's why most people who daily their track car either swap out their pads every time or use high-performance street pads. Unplugged Performance sells high-performance street pads, and while these will improve your braking performance, they'll still most likely overheat on the track. The ones you want are their competition pads, as these have a much higher heat tolerance. The last thing you want is for your brakes to start fading just as you're beginning to have fun. What about all the downsides I mentioned? Well, if you own a Tesla, that means you have something ice track cars don't have. One pedal driving. I've been dailying the competition pads for a few months now without issue, thanks to regen braking. Just lift off the accelerator and let the motors bring you to a stop. No noise, no dust, and no brake wear. The only con is that they squeak when you do have to use them, but if you time your stops right, you'll almost never have to. Another problem with track pads is their higher activation temperature, meaning they need to be warmed up to be their most effective. But because Teslas are heavier than the average car, 
When you slam on them, they're going to reach that activation temperature almost instantly anyway. So once again, Tesla for the win. With all that said, you could track your Tesla with its stock pads, but they'll fade pretty quick. I've seen stock pads practically melt after just a few laps. If you don't want to get stuck doing just as many cooldown laps as hot laps, you're going to want to upgrade them. Link to the pads I got in the description. Now as far as calipers and rotors are concerned, the Model 3 performance already has pretty good ones from the factory. I drove my car pretty hard at Buttonwillow Raceway with the aforementioned upgrades and never felt like my brakes were approaching their limits. If you do need better brakes because you're planning on setting records at the Nürburgring or something, check out Unplugged Performance's big brake kits or, if you've got the money, their carbon ceramic ones. Another upgrade I have to mention that some swear makes a huge difference in brake firmness is a master cylinder brace. I didn't bother with one as I've seen just as many people say they're not worth it, though your mileage may vary. If you want to learn even more about brakes, see link to the article in the description. Finally, the modification you've all been waiting for, wheels. Probably one of the most common changes people make to their car right after delivery is get bigger aftermarket wheels because it's one of the easiest ways to make it look cool and unique. However, bigger isn't always better when it comes to track performance. In fact, smaller wheel sizes like 16 to 18 inches seem to be the most popular among racers. The Model 3 Performance's larger brakes won't even let you use anything smaller than 18s, and even some 18s won't fit. Another complication choosing wheels for the Model 3 Performance is its stepped center hub. You can rectify this by getting some hub rings, or just buy your wheels from T-Sportline or aftermarketev.com, which are custom milled to be compatible. The next thing to consider is width. A wider wheel allows you to use a wider tire, which means a larger contact patch and more grip. Though you'll want to be careful how wide you go to avoid rubbing issues, unless you're planning on swapping out suspension components that allow for camber, toe, and caster adjustment. Now every race car driver will tell you one of the most effective things you can do to improve lap times is reduce weight, or more specifically when it comes to wheels, unsprung weight. Alloy wheels are manufactured one of three ways, cast, flow formed, or forged. Cast wheels are typically the cheapest, heaviest, and most likely to break apart on the track totaling your car. Yeah, avoid those. Flow formed wheels are lighter and stronger than cast, but can still fail if used on a heavier car with sticky tires. That brings us to forged wheels. While they cost more, it's cheaper than having to order a new Tesla. Forged wheels are usually lighter due to their fabrication process, leading to a much stronger wheel than the other two methods, despite using less material. I went with some 19 by 9 inch MW05s from Martian Wheels. All their wheels are forged, account for the Model 3 Performance's step center hub, and come with a lifetime structural warranty. I chose the 19s to leave room for future brake upgrades, and I wanted the 9 inch width. They recommend 245 width tires, but I run 255s no problem. They have a plus 34 offset and weigh in at just 23 pounds each. A unique feature that they have that I really like is a knurled bead that prevents the tire from slipping on the wheel when accelerating or braking. Note that some companies that sell flow formed wheels advertise them as flow forged in order to trick you into thinking they're actually forged wheels. If you want to learn more about alloy wheels and how they're made, see links in the description. Wrapping up our list of track necessities with possibly the most impactful upgrade, tires. Installing a set of grippy rubber can have a massive effect on your car's acceleration, braking, and cornering ability. As long as the tires you use are relatively new and in good condition, whether or not they're track focused isn't really a safety issue per se, but I highly recommend getting a separate set of dedicated track tires. One reason is you don't want to ruin your everyday tires. I've seen people take their Model 3 with the 19 inch OEM Continental tires on the track and have chunks of tread missing after a few laps. Some will just get a set of 200 Treadwear summer tires and daily them, but the downsides are that they don't usually do very well in wet or cold conditions, typically wear out quicker, and have a high rolling resistance which kills efficiency and range. I got a special closeout deal on a set of 255-35 R19 Yokohama Adven Neova 8008Rs off TireRack.com. These are 200 Treadwear Extreme Performance Summer Tires, meaning they prioritize dry traction over everything else. I ran them at Button Willow Raceway and was impressed by how well they performed. They're noticeably wider than my eco-focused 720 treadwear Nokian 1 all seasons, and slightly smaller in diameter as well. While you don't need to get TPMS sensors for your extra set of wheels and tires, I recommend it just so you're not constantly reminded by the car that they're missing, and being able to monitor your PSI is a plus. Lowering your PSI can improve traction by increasing your tire's contact patch. 
32 PSI seemed to be the sweet spot for me, but it may be different for you depending on your wheel and tire setup. For a great guide on choosing your next set of competition tires, see link to article in the description. So that's it! That completes our list of Tesla track essentials. Obviously, there's a lot more you could do to improve your car. Carbon fiber doors to reduce weight, body kits to increase downforce, coilovers to improve handling, etc. But the point of this video was to disseminate the minimum recommended requirements. The modifications we covered today will ensure safe and fun track days for you and your Tesla. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment any ideas you have for future content, and we'll see you next time here on the Tesla Snake.